Kent State really does care about its students. And I think that if a student wants to feel supported throughout their time here and feel like they have someone to go to for help or for advice or just to talk, Kent State is the place for that. Hi, it's John Taffer from Bar Rescue. Did you know the second building in America was a tavern? When I built my new restaurant franchise concept, Taffer's Tavern, I thought back to the roots of what makes a tavern a tavern. Timeless character. All while delivering an unbelievably delicious food and beverage experience. That paired with my 40 plus years in the industry provides a clear roadmap to success. Do you have what it takes to be a Taffer's Tavern franchisee? If so, I'd love to hear from you. Visit franchise.tafferstavern.com. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Bowl. DFS Today podcast. It's a wonderful Wednesday, November 3rd. Big slate on our hands. We're talking about 11 games today. I'm riding solo for all 11 of these games. So buckle up, get settled in, get prepared for plenty of sips of water in between some of these games. It's going to be a wild ride. We got a nice, nice slate on our hands. We love these big slates sometimes because we're not so worried about the ownership. But I'm not going to waste too much time here, guys. I'm going to be motoring through these things. A lot of games and players we could just cross off with such a big player pool. But before we jump into anything, quick shout out to Manscaped. Guys, check out manscaped.com, the number one line for male grooming products that you can think of, ever seen, or tried. If you head over to manscaped.com, use that promo code HOOPBALL20, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping on your entire first purchase. So, You can get the lawnmower. You can get the ear, hair, and nose trimmer. I always struggle to say it. You can get the nice shea butter. You can get a little bit of that toner, the conditioner. They got a little bit of everything for all of your downstairs grooming you can think of. Over at manscaped.com. Promo code HOOPBALL20. All right, we're coming off of a pretty interesting slate. One that, as of now, I'm recording this the night before. It's about... Almost 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, where I am right now. Doing fairly well. You know, we can't complain. A little bit of disappointment from Cade Cunningham. Although the recipe was there. No minutes restriction. He played the minutes, just did absolutely nothing with them. But everybody else in the lineup's looking good. I had some Giannis. I ended up playing JaVale McGee before we had that news, which ended up panning pretty well. Uh, Played the Brunson. You know, played Jimmy Butler, who's playing fairly well. We got about a quarter left of that game now. A few other guys mixed in between, but that was mainly a lot of my core uh, with those guys. And I sprinkled in some Bobby Porter, sprinkled in some George Hill here and there, did some other things with it. So hoping that I end up finishing with a nice little profitable night, but still plenty of basketball left. Plenty of basketball. And I can tell you one thing I didn't play was really anybody from that Lakers Rockets game. So that might come back to bite me. We'll find out. But enough with that slate. Let's start talking about tonight's first game of the night. We have ourselves Portland Trail Blazers traveling to Cleveland, taking on the Cavs. For the Cavs, Taco Fall, Kevin Love, Isaac Okoro, all ruled out. And for the Raptors, Scotty Barnes has been ruled out, and we're still waiting to hear back on Pascal Siakam. They're saying about two weeks for him. Should be back in about two weeks. And Yuta Watanabe is ruled out as well. As far as the game total, 219. Portland being favored by three points. So we'll start off here with the away team, as always. 9-7 for Lillard, not paying that price tag for him. Just a little bit too expensive for his poor, poor play as of late. I'm starting to believe those injury rumors that we were hearing about Lillard for quite some time now. He's getting the shot attempts. Nothing's changing with that. So eventually they're going to fall. But 9-7, big slate. A lot of guys to choose from. Probably not going to be making my player pull. C.J. McCollum coming in at 8-1. Just prefer to play him over Lillard. Is he one of my top options? Probably not. It's a fair price tag for him. It's where he should be priced. Don't see myself going there. And to be honest, I don't love a lot here at all. Uh, before I just start reading off every guy's name and telling you no, 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 no. Uh, I really just don't like a lot of players on this team. Um, really not so much in this game in general. Norman Powell could be a pivot play for if he gets hot, but nothing more in, than in your GPPs. You really can't trust him. Uh, hasn't been putting up consistent or really any 30-point games. On to the other side of the ball. Jared Allen coming off of a career high in points. 
with 24 actual points. Monster game in that last one. Put up 56 DK points. Only price to at 6,400. I don't think I would go chasing it necessarily, but you know we know what his upside is. We, now we've seen it. He could get you that big, big game. 6,400 is a fair price tag, and he's probably only at that high of a price because he's coming off of a monster. If I go anywhere, it would probably just be some players in the backcourt between Garland, Sexton, both these guys very similar price. Sexton struggled from the floor mightily in that last one. Garland's been just putting up a consistent, you know, 28 to 30, it feels like, on most nights. I think Sexton offers more upside, even in that game where he struggled. Still put up 32 DK points, so I probably prefer Sexton ever so slightly, especially with the Coro out. He should continue, continue to see big minutes. Really the only guy I'm really kind of looking at in those in that first game, but... On to the next one, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Toronto Raptors travel to Washington, taking on the Wizards here. Oh, I'm sorry. I just kind of read the wrong injury report in that first one. It was Portland traveling to Cleveland. I only gave Cleveland's injury report, and it's probably because we didn't have Portland's. I actually read off the Raptors one. So we just heard the Raptors one. We'll hear it again right now. Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam. Do apologize there. And then as far as Washington's concerned, uh, we know that Gafford's back. He started in that last one. But Davis Bertans is now out dealing with a left ankle sprain. Rui Hachimura is still out with Cassius Winston. As far as the game total, we don't have one. But Washington is favored by three in this one. Looking at the Raptors, a lot to like over here. We know that without Scotty Barnes, we're going to see a few extra minutes go around. But Van Vliet coming in at 8,500. And this is the Van Vliet we were hoping to see early on in the season where he has these consistent games. 8,500 feels a little bit too priced out of my liking, a little bit too expensive. Yes, he has that 50-point upside. It's a great matchup, so he probably makes for a good GPP pivot, but 8,500 just feels a little too expensive for me. OG getting up there as well at 7,700 now, and OG, again, we talked about it prior to the season, probably on every other slate. It's going to be these two guys shoot for the most part. He took 27 shot attempts. Probably the most of OG's career was in that last game. Put up 36 points, had a big game, 50 DK points. 7,700 is not too expensive in this matchup. I would rather play OG, I think, over Siakam, or I mean over Van Vliet, but he's not not like a must-play, a little risky at that price range. We'll get to some value later on in the slate that we just feel a little bit better about. So I, he's in play, not my favorite play. Sviva Kalik drew the start in place of Scotty Barnes in that last one, so definitely an option to look at. He came out here and played 34 minutes in that last game, only 3,700. Absolutely great value play, especially in this matchup. Put up almost 34 DK points. I could definitely see myself having some Svi. Probably my favorite player on the Raptors. It'll probably be a fairly chalky value play. Can play dual eligibility as well, shooting guard and small forward. So got to love that. And then probably just avoiding the whole center position in a hole. Precious has not been playing well. We've been kind of seeing his minutes tread downward. If you want to look anywhere, it'd be Ken Birch, who's been in an upward trajectory. Played 31 minutes in the last game, 29 in the prior. So two favorite plays on this game. Or in this game, would be Svee, Ken Birch, and then I would probably say looking at OG. On the Washington side of things, Harold no longer getting that starting nod. So he went from being the chalkiest player of all time to a little less chalky now. Uh, still playing big minutes off the bench as Gafford was working his way back. It's not like Gafford was playing a full complement of minutes anyway. But 6,600, not my favorite you know, matchup necessarily. And probably not a guy I'm going to be overly excited about. GPP pivot. Bradley Beal coming in at 9,600. And it's a rock solid matchup for Beal. But 9,600, we have a lot of guys close to that 10K mark where you could probably only play one, maybe two of them, depending on how much value we, we see open up. We've already talked about a good value play. It'll be a little bit more that opens up. Uh, so I don't think I'll be going to too, too much Beal. But he's a guy that I never cross out of my player pool. We know his upside. We know what he's capable of. He could drop 50 or 60 on any given night. Outside of those uh, two guys, not really playing Dinwiddie, not really playing Kuzma. Both those guys priced appropriately. If anything, I think Dinwiddie's a little overpriced. Kuzma's been having some monster rebounding upside games. So it's definitely there in his in his uh, arsenal. But, again, not a guy I'm overly excited about at 7-1. I don't want to go investing all my money into these first two games. I think maybe getting a player from here or there while sprinkling some out. We have 11 games to choose from. Don't think I need to stack this one. On to the next game, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have the New York Knicks traveling to Indiana, taking on the Pacers. For the Pacers, Malcolm Brogdon is questionable. He said that he's expected to play. He expects to play. Jeremy Lamb, T.J. Warren, both ruled out. For the Knicks, 
Taj Gibson, Nerlens Noel, both questionable. So we'll have to monitor that, see what's going on with them. Uh, both those guys have to be ruled out, probably mean a few extra OB Toppin minutes. 218 game total, Indiana being favored by two. For the Knicks, Randall getting a little bit of a price decrease over the past few games at 9,400. Uh, came out, had a pretty solid game in that last one. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger, but cooled off the fourth quarter a little bit. Put up 43 DK points, 22, 9, and 5. It's a good matchup for him. They're going to need a size. Sabonis is not necessarily somebody that scares me too much on defense. We've seen over the past like two seasons now, Randall's not afraid to step out, take three pointers, take those mid range jumpers, which is a recipe, I guess, if you're going to be going against Miles Turner. So I have no problem looking at him. Won't be playing RJ Barrett at 6,900. Kemba Walker had a little bit of a down one after he put up three straight 35 plus DK point performances, only put up 25 in that last one in 28 minutes against Toronto. Uh, fairly solid matchup. 5,900, I would keep him in my player pool as well. Not somebody I'm overly excited about because we know there's some risk associated with him. But definitely somebody that we could definitely you know play. So Randall, Walker, both those guys in play. Like I said, if we do see those two front court members and Taj Gibson, New Orleans Noel both ruled out. Mitchell Robinson becomes a little bit of a stronger play. Uh, this could be one that he finds himself into foul trouble a little early, so it, it does concern me a little bit. But Obi Toppin would be there as a dumpster dive value play if both those guys rolled out. Only 3,100. We've seen it when they're both rolled out. Uh, they don't mind playing Obi. He'd probably see about 20 minutes if they're both rolled out. So might end up finding some better stuff that opens as far as the value plays go, but he's there if we need him. On to the Pacers. Sabonis coming in at 10-1. It's a hefty price tag for Sabonis, but he's routinely giving you that comfortable floor, has that high ceiling, probably not playing him, though. Nick's defense is not one that I overly like to target. And 10-1, a lot of 10K guys, we'll talk about it, a lot of 10K guys to choose from. I just don't want to put all my eggs in that basket. Brogdon, a little bit overpriced. Karis LeVert, starting to get a little bit more minutes, game in and game out now. He played had an eight-minute bump in that last one. Played 24 minutes, put up about 29 DK points, 7K. If we hear that there's no restrictions, he's definitely in play. He'll have high usage. Brogdon's back. I get that. But he'll still continue to take at least 15 shot attempts is what I imagine. But at 7K, without knowing the restrictions the night before, can't have all that much faith into him. Miles Turner, 6,100 on DK. Power forward eligibility on FanDuel is nice when you're playing Miles Turner. But uh, back-to-back good games, good performances from him. 6,100, though, against his Knicks team. It's It's... It's moderate. We can keep him in the player pool. Uh, it's a comfortable price tag. It's where he should be priced on night in and night out. It's when he falls below that 6K mark that we could really consider him. So I'll keep him there. Not somebody I'm overly excited about, though. And then Duarte, 58, model of consistency. Good cash play if you need it. Upside might be drifting away a little bit if Brogdon's back, just because now Levert, Brogdon's bonus will probably outshoot him, is what I would imagine. But he should still get his, and no more McConnell if we get Brogdon back. 5,100, he'll go back to that bench roll, so we don't need to really consider him. Sip of water quick. All right. <clears throat> Let's work on to that next one. Boston Celtics traveling to Orlando, taking on the Magic in this one. So, for the Celtics, Peyton Pritchard is available. And for the Magic, Michael Carter-Williams, Markel Fultz, Gary Harris, I'm sorry, Gary Harris is questionable. Jonathan Isaacs ruled out with Markel Fultz, Michael Carter-Williams, and Etwan Moore. 215.5 game total. Celtics favored by 6.5 points in this one. Uh, this one is going to be a, quite an interesting. I definitely think there's going to be a few one-off plays that we could look at. Jalen Brown coming out at 8,700. It feels a little bit too priced up, especially after that confirmation where uh, it looks like Marcus Smart, you know, if you want to talk about a squeaky wheel, this might be the squeaky wheel game. He said he's not a stand in the corner, and just shoot type of player. He wants to get a little bit more involved in the offense. Said that Tatum and Brown defenses are figuring them out and are trying to adjust and make them pass, and they just refuse to. So if there was ever a squeaky wheel game, it would probably be this one. Looking at Marcus Smart, 5,600, if you want to take that narrative and run with it, sure. Only in your tournaments. Don't trust it enough in cash. Outside of those two, or outside of Marcus Smart, uh, I think this could be a rock solid Robert Williams game. 5,900. Had his minutes kind of uh, held back in that last one a little bit, but it got out of hand. Uh, one bad game, two good games, one bad game. A little bit of risk associated with it, but knowing that they're going to go against his double big front court, they're going to need a few more minutes out of him. So if you want to consider him, absolutely in play. And then Al Horford has yet to have a bad game. 
going to keep him in my player pool. He's been paying off that 6,900 salary. Uh, we've, we heard them come out and basically say he's our best defender. So the front, two, the front court guys are what I'm really considering. And then Marcus Smart, if you want to look at that little narrative. On the other side of the ball, Cole Anthony just continues he continues to play fantastic basketball. Put up 61 DK points in that last one. I'm going to take my foot off the pedal on this one, though. I had exposure for him for probably about the past three or four games. Uh, not a great matchup. Not the one I want to target. It'll be a tough defense, especially knowing that Marcus Smart will probably accept that challenge and try to put the fire out. Franz Wagner, another guy coming off another big game, 5,500. Shut. 18 shot attempts, and the shot attempts have been there for him in that last in, in the past few games, but he's also shot at least 50% from three over the past four games. He's eventually going to cool off. He is not a 50% three-point shooter. Uh, I'll pass on Franz. 5,500, I think we'll have some better value available. And then really just looking at the front court again. We know that we've been in the past able to target front courts going against the Celtics team. It's a little bit different this season with Al Horford there. But Mo Bamba coming at 73 just feels a little bit too expensive for my liking. We've seen him pay off that salary a few times, but not over the past two games. Don't generally want to target him in this one. Uh, I probably prefer to play Wendell Carter Jr. at 61, but even then, uh, it's a little risk associated with him. He has that power forward eligibility, but he's put up at least 37.5 DK points over three of the past four games. So I prefer Wendell Carter Jr. over Mo Bamba. Don't love either of them all that much, but I'll keep... Wendell Carter in my player pool. If I happen to land on him as one of those last guys to round out my lineup, I wouldn't be too mad about it. All right, we're motoring. Game five. Another 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Chicago Bulls traveling to Philly, taking on the Sixers for the Bulls. Devin Dotson, Kobe White, Patrick Williams all rolled out. Zach Levine will be available. And I'm sorry, for the, for the Bulls, yeah. For the Sixers, Danny Green. Tobias Harris, both ruled out. Grant Raleigh, Ben Simmons, both ruled out. Danny Green dealing with hamstring tightness. Tobias Harris, health and safety protocols. As we saw, he missed that last one. for now Korkmaz drew the start in his place. Looks like we do not have a game total as of right now or a spread. So we're going to have to wait and see exactly what that comes out with. We should probably get it around 1, 130 is what I imagine. But we should know most of the major players in this game, by the way. For the Bulls, I normally love to target Vucevic in this matchup. Going against a team that drafted him usually crushes crushes the Sixers. 9-100 is a lofty price tag to pay, though. So really only paid off that salary that once this season. So tough to get behind it, but the narrative that he's always played well against this team. So I don't mind maybe in a GPP if you want to take that flyer. Sure, why not? Outside of that, I, I think everybody's just priced appropriately. Don't really want to go to too, too, too much here. Uh, 80, 88 for Levine, 85 for the Rosen. That all just feels about right. Caruso is the one value play you could take advantage of at 4K. Probably prefer to play Svi over him. But the dude continues to rack up steals. Uh, one of the league leader in steals right now. He's playing bigger minutes, uh, twenty at least 23 minutes over the past five games, upwards of 38, th- uh, 33, 28. So he's playing a fair amount of minutes, especially with Patrick Williams if this game goes small, which it probably should with no Tobias Harris. I can see yourself playing some Caruso. Why not? On the Philly side of things, Embiid coming in at 10-3. I mean, the offense is going to have to run through him. Wouldn't be shocked if the Bulls had come away with this game, though. And you got to imagine if they start to pull away too much, Embiid would be the first person to hit the pine after dealing with knee soreness for quite some time. Rested in that last game. Should be good to go. 10-3. Prefer a couple other 10K-plus guys. But it's Embiid. Outside of that, you could take a look at some of these ancillary pieces, maybe like a Cork Moss or a Thibel, Shake Milton. Those are the guys I'd probably be targeting more, just knowing that they're all going to get a minutes bump with no Tobias Harris. They'll all get a usage bump as well. If the game gets out of hand, I would expect all their minutes to be fairly comfortable, and they're decent enough value plays right now where we could consider them uh, even if they only play 25 minutes. So Cork Moss, 43, the most expensive one, probably got the guy with the highest upside out of those guys, has the probably the most shot attempts as well. That's what I imagine, so... Don't mind looking at Cork Miles. I'll probably stay away from Maxi, and we're not going to go back to Drummond if Embiid's playing. Still, I prefer V over all of them. On to the sixth game. Atlanta Hawks traveling to Brooklyn. This one should be a nice fantasy-friendly game. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time game. For the Hawks, Bogdan Bogdanovich is probable. John Collins, questionable. 
Onyeka Okongwu is out, and then Trey Young is probable. John Collins dealing with a left foot strain. This is going to be the front half of a back-to-back for him. Wouldn't shock me if they decide they want to sit him out. I think they're going to want him for this game, big Eastern Conference game. But with it being the front half of a back-to-back, they might just uh, proceed with caution. And then Nick Laxton, Kyrie Irving, both out, as we know, for the Nets. As of right now, two nineteen and a half game total. Brooklyn being favored by four and a half. Looking at the Hawks, Trey Young coming in at ninety five hundred. It's an expensive price tag to pay for Trey. Of course, he could always be worth it. Don't get me wrong; it's a fine matchup. If there's no John Collins, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable. I'll just expect a few more shot attempts for him. We know that they should be able to burn this team with the pick and roll. Nets have been very, very poor at defending it, but it's hard to pay 9500 for Trey Young when he hasn't paid off that price tag in the past four games. I'll probably pass on Trey, but if you play him, I wouldn't fault you. It's Trey Young. We know what he can do. Clint Capella coming in at 7100 I do like Clint Capella in this matchup. For the first time this season, he played more than 30 minutes in that game against Washington, came out, put up 40 DK points. 7100 I'd expect him to play more than 30 minutes, especially if there's no John Collins. So sign me up. I do like some. Clint Capella, Collins plays. I'll probably just play Clint over him. He's in play. I would normally like him in this matchup, but I just don't trust him. I, I, you know, again, back to back, I don't expect him to play. Might have those minutes limited. Uh, if he sits, we could either see one of two things. It would either be most likely either Gallinari or it would be DeAndre Hunter drawing the start. Both would be in play at value. 4K for Hunter, 3,500 for Gallinari. We'd also see some minutes trickle down to Cam Reddish, to Kevin Werder. Both those guys would see extra bench usage as well if those one of those two start. Well, Hunter should start regardless, but if uh, Gallinari starts, we'll see that bench unit usage trickle down to the other two. On to the Brooklyn side of things. James Harden coming in at 10-2. Has slowly but surely been getting back to James Harden-esque form. Back-to-back games with 50 DK points. He's getting to the line a little bit more. We saw against Indiana, took 19 free throw attempts, only three in that last one, but looking a little bit more comfortable, and we we were, we were expected this. The shooting will return to form sooner rather than later. The rebounds, the assists, the defensive stats, those are always going to be there for Hard. He's always going to get those. It's the shooting that we were concerned with, and over the past two games, he's shooting over 50%. So with that being said, I have some confidence in him. 10-2, don't mind looking at Harden. Durant coming in at 10-8. Uh, who do I prefer out of the two? I'd probably say James Harden. A little bit more consistent of a floor when we're just talking based upon the ancillary stats of the rebounds, of the assists. I like the matchup for him a little bit better. So I prefer James Harden over Durant. Durant also $600 more. So take that for what it's worth. Bruce Brown coming in at 4700 Everybody's favorite value play. The value starting to get soaked up, though. Uh, I don't want to play Bruce Brown at near 5 k You know, he hasn't paid off that salary but once in the past four games. So I'll take a pass on Bruce Brown. If I'm going to go anywhere, it might be a guy like Joe Harris at 46, who only $100 left in Bruce Brown. Yeah, sure. Give me the guy that I know is going to play more minutes. The guy that's going to get more shot attempts. That's it, though. Really just Durant, Harden, a little bit of Joe Harris. Not loving the front court options. Both those guys between Aldridge and Griffin getting a little bit priced out of my liking as well. All right. Five games left, 8 p.m., Eastern Standard Time game. Denver Nuggets traveling to Memphis, taking on the Grizzlies. Rematch, we just saw this game a few nights ago. Same injuries, just Jamal Murray, all that we need to be concerned with. Not going to probably be back until like that February mark. Dylan Brooks out for the Grizzlies. He's been out all season, so nothing really to note for these two teams. One and a half point spread, Denver or Memphis being favored, and a 213 game total. For the Nuggets, Jokic coming in at 11-4. It's a high price tag to play for Jokic. He is the most expensive player on the slate. Had a down game. We just saw these two teams play two days ago. Only put up 50 DK points, but we're getting that consistent floor. Shot fine from the field. We just didn't get to see the big rebounding game. We saw Steven Adams. He could do that to people sometimes, but I would expect a pretty solid bounce back game from Jokic here. Don't mind spending up on him. Uh, between him and maybe like Steph Curry would probably be the two favorite priced up options on the slate. But we have a lot of center value, so it's going to come down to construction for you. Not playing Michael Porter Jr. really until I see him just kind of snap himself out of the funk that he's been in all season long. 
been at sixty one hundred. He's really only paid off that price tag once, twice, and not by much. So I'll take a pass on him if anywhere. I wouldn't mind looking at Will Barton, fifty four hundred. The other guy, he shot one of eight in that last game, really, really poorly. Hasn't been shooting great actually for the past two, but for the uh, games three out of the four, or I'm sorry, four out of the past five games before those bad two game shooting games, he shot at least fifty percent. So I don't mind looking at him at fifty four hundred. If you land on him type of player, maybe you're doing a turbo slate. Sure, why not? We'll probably have some better value, especially when we get to this next one where we know there's a big injury. So for re- for me, it's really just Jokic. That's it. Uh, I'm not going to get too cute here. Aaron Gordon had a fine game in that last one at 5K. Paid off that price tag. Just not a guy I want to go back to the well on. On to the Grizzly side of things. John Morant. Dude just continues and continues to smash the slates. 93, though, I'll continue to fade. He's playing great, don't get me wrong. 12 of 22 shooting, shooting over 50%, putting up 26 actual points. Still not paying off that $9,300 price tag, though. We really need 50 from him in our tournaments. You can get away with that in cash and feel comfortable with it, don't get me wrong. But I'll probably take a pass on him at 9,300. There's better guys I'd rather spend up on. D'Anthony Melton, real down game in that last one. Steven Adams coming in at 45. Don't mind playing Adams. They're going to need his size in this matchup. We saw him play 30 minutes in that last game. Didn't put up the DK points that we'd like to see, only six and seven. But if he's playing 31 minutes, more often than not, we can expect him to get double-digit rebounds and a couple putbacks. So don't mind looking at Adams at 45 if you needed to save some value or save some money and get some value at the center position. And then the only other guy to really talk about would be Desmond Bain, 5,400. A couple down games in the last one, but he remains to be consistent with his minutes and his shot attempts. So I don't mind looking at Bain if you land on him. Not a guy that's a plug-and-play on this kind of slate. We just haven't seen massive upside from him. In 11 games, you're really going to need to put up a high score on this slate. Desmond Bain, does he get you there? Maybe in a turbo, but I think overall, probably not. Better cash game play, if anything. All right, here's the puppy in the background. Take a quick sip of water real fast. Talking too fast. All right. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. L.A. Clippers traveling to Minnesota. Another fantasy-friendly game taking on Timberwolves. D'Angelo Russell has already been ruled out. Patrick Beverly is questionable. For the Clippers, Serge Ibaka, Keon Johnson, Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Morris Sr. All ruled out. As far as the game total and the spread, we don't have one. I guess Patrick Beverly is going to do that too. So we'll have to monitor that. Check uh, check back in the afternoon. We should have it. Paul George coming in at 10-9. High-priced player. Very expensive. He's been paying that price tag off, though. I had ownership on him in the past two games. He was my second highest favorite person to spend up on in that last one next to Jokic. Played outperformed Jokic. The minutes, the shot attempts, the usage, it's all going to be there for George night in and night out. So you pay for what you get. I don't mind the matchup, actually. In fact, I like this matchup for him again. I don't mind going back to the well of Paul George. He's a little expensive, though, so maybe we have some value open up where we can expect uh, or, you know, have him pay it off. But, I mean, I prefer him over Doncic. I prefer him over a lot of these other guys that we've talked about. Do I prefer him over Jokic? Probably not. I think it's very close between Steph and Paul George. I think Jokic has that safer floor. Same thing with Steph. I think both those guys have safer floors. But uh, could George outscore them? Absolutely, he could. Just a little bit of a lower floor than them as well outside of george canard's been playing consistent minutes 4600 three straight games at 30 plus minutes don't mind taking a stab at him uh but i'll continue to look at batum as well still underpriced at 4300 nick batum's just been playing fantastic put up 33 dk for points for us i think i uh i wrote him up mentioned him he was one of my favorite value plays in that in our you know tears game at the end and he's just been getting the minutes. He should continue. He's a very versatile player. Expect him, especially in this matchup. Feels like a good matchup for him, especially if the Timberwolves want to go a little bit smaller. And we know that that's what the Clippers are going to try to force. So this is probably not going to be the Vanderbilt game. But don't mind looking at Batum, 4,300. Nice little comfortable value play. Decent ceiling. Pretty solid floor as well in there. Not going to go to Reggie Jackson. Just haven't been seeing enough ancillary stats for him to pay that 6,200. Shot hasn't really fallen for him all season. He'll write the ship at some point this game or this season. He's yet to shoot over 41% in any of the games he's played, but he's also yet to top five assists, five rebounds. He hasn't really done that. Actually, I'm sorry. He had one game with six assists. 
Six to 200. I think we have better options out there. Won't go there. And Bledsoe is nothing more than a tournament play. Minutes have been a little up and down. Usage hasn't really been there. Still a fair price tag, though. On to the other side of the ball. Carl Anthony Towns, 10-6. He should absolutely smash in this one. Uh, we talked about it. Clippers try to play small, but they're not going to take Towns off the floor. Uh, with no D'Angelo Russell, we'll see the usage uptick a little bit. It's it's tough uh, where we spend our money between Towns, Jokic, Curry, George. Those are the four top value plays that you're looking at. I think anybody in that 9, 6, or above range you could cross off for those four guys. It's it's really just trying to find that right winning combination. Maybe you stack it. Maybe you get both of them in here, try to get George, try to get Towns. We're going to need a lot of that value to open. But I do like Towns with this, especially with no Russell. He'll get that usage uptick. Anthony Edwards coming in at 8400 Getting a little bit of a price boost, $200 more than in that, in that, in that last one. I don't know how much more of a, of a usage bump Edwards can really get in this. With no D'Angelo Russell, I mean, he's already taken 20-plus shots tonight in and night out, shooting from deep. Maybe he picks up a few more assists and handles the ball a little bit. But the main guys I'd be looking at, there's no Patrick Beverly. It's going to be Malik Beasley, 4,100. I think he makes for a fantastic value play. Probably draw that start, play a fair amount of point guards for minutes for him. I mean, McLaughlin could draw the start and then salary, and if that's the case, yeah, you could look at him. Uh, they're just going to be really dependent on what's going on with Patrick Beverly at 3,700. If Beverly plays and starts, absolutely. I don't mind looking at whoever started that point guard position. Even with Beverly, we get a little bit of that revenge narrative in there as well. So got to love revenge narratives. So the guys I'm looking at, Towns, probably won't go to too, too much Edwards. I just prefer to play Towns, if, you know, as the high-priced stud in this game, I guess, uh, or on this side of the ball. Actually, I don't even know if I prefer to play him over George. Very close. Uh, but then also Beverly, Beasley, both those guys, very much a play. I doubt it's McLaughlin that starts unless Beverly's out, in which case we could consider him at minimum salary and no Vanderbilt for me in this one had a solid one in that last one but I don't think this is the Vanderbilt game I think they go smaller with the Kogi all right only three games left Dallas Mavericks on the second half of back-to-back traveling to San Antonio taking on the Spurs no injury report for the Mavericks but we know that Cleaver is going to be out Chris Stapps is questionable they said he might be able to play tomorrow dealing with that lower back tightness missed the past four games for the Spurs Doug McDermott questionable He's missed the past four games as well. Zach Collins ruled out. Josh Primo in the G League. No game total, no spread. We're going to have to wait and see what goes on with Dallas and who's available. Not really interested in Luka. Prefer those other high-priced guys over on back-to-back game. Just haven't been seeing too many ceiling games from Luka. Not a lot to operate with. Defenses are just basically throwing everybody that they could at him. If Porzingis plays, no Brunson for me. Uh, If Porzingis sits, Brunson very much in play. Uh, Brunson's been playing absolutely fantastic. He's actually getting a little bit of a dip in salary from tonight's slate. I think it was about 5,500. He's getting priced at 51 here. If Porzingis starts, we'll probably see Brunson come back off of the bench. At the center position, no thank you. I would have an interest in Dwight Powell if Porzingis sits, but if Porzingis plays, no Dwight Powell. So those are pretty much the two options I would look at. They would be Brunson, they would be Powell, but I need Porzingis to sit. If Porzingis plays, no interest in this in this team whatsoever. On to the Spurs side of things, DeJounte Jantre coming in at 200 getting a lofty price tag there. I'll probably take a pass at 9200 Once you start drifting over 9 k you could find a way to get those other studs in there. It's going to you know, have to be a sacrifice somewhere else. Could I see him having a good game? Absolutely. If I'm looking anywhere, it might be the center position at Jakob Pertl. Put up 40 DK points in this matchup earlier. We've seen just centers crush the Mavs for the past two seasons now. Not the best of price tags, but I could easily see him paying off that 7 k price tag. And if McDermott sits, we'll probably see Lonnie Walker draw that start again at 4,400. You could consider him for value. Just not an overly high ceiling. Has a low bottom floor, too, where we could see him put up one of those 14 or 15-point games. So not my favorite value play. We've talked about a few better. Malik Beasley, Sveen Michalik, prefer both those guys over. On to the 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Charlotte Hornets travel to Golden State, taking on the Warriors here. No major news for anybody on the Hornets, everybody in the G League. For the Warriors, it's Clay Thompson. It's James Wiseman. Wiseman working his way back. Should be back fairly soon for this Warriors team. 226 game total, one of the higher game totals of the night. Six-point spread being favored to the Warriors. All right. LaMelo Ball, 8-6. I like LaMelo in this matchup. I do. 
He's been playing great over the past two games, two straight 50-plus DK point performances. Don't mind looking at LaMelo. So that's kind of one of the reasons why you don't see me playing too many of those 9K guys. I either try to go up or I'll go down. LaMelo should have 45-plus written all over it in this one. It's going to be a fast-paced game. If the, unless the Hornets can't keep it close or if LaMelo just shoots you know, 2 of 15 or 16, which we've seen that happen a couple times this season, uh, I, I would expect a nice performance from this one. No Mason Plumley for me. If anything, I, would, I wouldn't mind looking at Terry Rozier coming in at 6,800 now that he's back. He's playing consistent minutes. Took 22 shot attempts in that last one. Put up 40 DK, DK points. Absolutely love the backcourt in this. So Lamella Ball, Terry Rozier are my two main options. I'll probably avoid Bridges at 81. And then now with Hayward at 73, it, it's tough to buy into the usage. It's basically going to be either Rozier or him shooting. Then the two games with Rozier back, he's yet to top eight shot attempts in those two games. In fact, it's a combined 15 shot attempts over the past two games with Rozier back. So I'll take a pass on him as well. Really just LaMelo, really just Rozier. On the other side of the ball, Steph Curry, 11-1. One of the higher uh, price guys on the slate, but yeah, this this one has a big Steph Curry game written all over it. Uh, absolutely like Steph Curry, love Steph Curry in this matchup. It's tough to decide between these priced up guys, between George, between Jokic, between Steph, between Towns. It's really just going to come down to construction. Steph's the only one of those guys who's priced up at the guard position. So take it out for what it's worth. I probably see myself having a fair amount of ownership and sprinkle them across some of my lineups. Looking at Steph in this one outside of Steph. Draymond coming in at 7,100. Anytime I like Steph, I always like Draymond just because we're hoping for a competitive back and forth game. Draymond has three straight games with 37 plus DK points, 42 plus over the past two. He's been paying off that salary. Not expecting Bridges to necessarily shut him down or do anything of the sort. So don't mind looking at Draymond in this one as well. And that's probably where I'll draw the line. With everybody healthy, we're not going to be taking stabs out of Porter. Damian Lee's back in the rotation, so that might limit Poole's minutes ever so slightly. We've seen earlier in the season, Poole did not really crack that 30-minute mark when Lee was really healthy. Only in one game did he. And at almost 6 k I'm good with paying that price tag. Barely pays that off as it is. Final game of the night is another very fantasy-friendly game. Pelicans traveling to Sacramento. This is a back-to-back for both teams here, so we're not going to have a game total. We're not going to have injury report. We're not going to have much of anything. We're going to have to kind of wait and see, but Brandon Ingram was ruled out of today's game. Devontae Graham was questionable coming into it. So if Ingram's out again, probably expect Hart to draw the start, and I have no issues going with Hart. 4,900. Didn't quite see how he's doing yet tonight, but we know Hart always possesses that big rebounding position or rebounding upside at his position. So 4,900, I think he makes for a fantastic value play. Uh, outside of him, I always like the target shooting guards going against the Pelicans, or I go, I mean going against the Kings. So the kill Alexander Walker would stumble into that. We see these two teams play, though, only a few days ago. Really struggled. Only was 5 of 16 shooting in that one, so... He's actually been having a few down games in a row in 6,600. The upside's there if there's no Ingram because, I, I, you know, he probably should be priced closer to 7K without Ingram in that lineup. So I'll keep him in my player pool, but it's not just like let me gravitate and go straight ahead and play him. Outside of Hart, the only other guy I'd consider would be Valanciunas because the Kings have been getting crushed by centers, but he's getting a nice price bump in this one at 8,500. So if you have the money and you want to spend it, I absolutely think Valanciunas should be worth it. You should be looking at 40-plus as his floor here. On to the Sacramento side of things, not a whole lot I like. It's a great matchup for these guys, but they're priced appropriately. Fox coming in at 85. No, thank you. We talked about, you know, guys like LaMelo, I'd rather play over him. So uh, I'll probably take a pass on Fox. Harrison Barnes, 75. He's definitely in play, but a little bit too expensive. On an 11-game slate, I think we have better value out there. Holmes at 63 is intriguing. Uh, he played well against the Pelicans in that last one. Shot 7 of 8 for about 31 and a half DK points, but at 63, 31 and a half just pays it off. Won a little bit more. Could do it. He didn't really get a big rebounding game in that last one, but that's the thing. Jonas Valanciunas can limit that. He's a bully. If anything, might look at Buddy Heald if you're looking for a narrative. Going against a team that drafted him, sure, why not? Take a stab at Buddy Heald. Played well in that game against him. Put up 33 and a half DK points, but you're paying a premium for him as well. So everyone just feels priced appropriately. So I, I really don't love these uh, these Kings players. If anything, I'd have a little bit more interest on the Pelican side of the ball. That's it. That brings us home. Let's see how long. 11 games cruised through. 40 minutes right there. So we'll get to our player tier segment real fast. Top tier guy of the night. 
This is a tough one. You guys already heard me talk about the people I do like. We'll start with this. I'll just cross off players for you guys. You know, I'm not playing Embiid. I'm not playing Durant. I'm not playing Doncic. I'm not playing Sabonis. I'm probably not playing Tatum either. Uh, you could pretty much say that all the way down until maybe I consider some Randall. But outside of those guys, all the way down until you get to LaMelo Ball. I'm crossing all those guys off of my player pool. I will play some Jokic. I'll play some Curry. I'll play some George. And I'll play some Towns. And then it goes, yeah, sure, I like Harden as well. And then straight down to LaMelo. I, you know, those are the guys I'm keeping my player pool. I know it's not the most helpful thing. If I had to pick one that I could only, – only one I could play, it would probably be Curry based on position eligibility – but it's really close between those guys. I couldn't fault you for playing any of them. They're all in equally good matchups. Uh, George stands out the most to me, and so does Towns. But it's a tough one. It really is. These guys are all in fantastic matchups. Looking at the mid-tier price range now. So that's uh, you know about 5 to 8K. I've already touched on a few of these guys throughout the night. If I had to pick one in this mid-tier price range, I mean, I, I have a lot of interest in Clint Capella at 7,100. I'll try to shoot a little lower in case you're looking more towards that 5K range, which we talked about several guys here as well. We could probably look at Josh Hart. He's at 49, so I guess he'd be technically considered a value. But if there's no Brandon Ingram, I do like be some Josh Hart. I like that upside that he possesses, especially with his rebounding. He could do a lot of that, so... Capella, especially if we have no John Collins, I, think I can easily see him smashing that price tag going against the Nets. Only a big game for them. Should be able to cook them on the pick and roll with Trey Young. And for value, talked about a few good value plays, two that stand out the most to me. Steve McCaleg, no Scotty Barnes, should draw that start again. 3,700, like him. And then I want to keep an eye on who is starting point guard for the Timberwolves, Patrick Beverly, or I mean, I, I think Malik Beasley's in play either way, but. Patrick Beverly and Malik Beasley would be the two guys I'm looking at. That is it. If you guys would like, follow me on Twitter, at Mike Apatria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. Give us a thumbs up, five-star rate review, all the good stuff, guys. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate everybody listening. Come join us in the Discord. Sign up for that HoopBall DFS Pass, only $4.99 per month. You get access to the Discord articles, ask us questions up until lock, even a little after lock. We're sometimes in there hanging out. Just maybe we had a late swap. We're talking about some of those tonight. But it's a great time. We've been seeing some people win some good money in there. Join in. four ninety nine a month. I mean, if you're playing DK, well worth it. Even FanDuel. We got we're answering FanDuel questions in there. But that's it, guys. Thank you for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll be with Harris. We'll be crushing the slate for you. Take care. Have a good one. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation. Some coffee's fast, but not fresh. Some coffee's fresh, but only after a long wait. Speedway coffee is made fresh at the push of a button, hot or iced, so you can have fresh coffee your way, right away. Get two times the points when you buy any size hot or iced coffee drink with Speedy Rewards. What you want is sometimes far from what you get. At Harry Ritchie's, we want you to get the heart-stopping, high-fiving diamond gift you want and pay for it the way you want. Our in-house financing lets you make payments that fit your budget and your life. Plus, at Harry Ritchie's, our jewelry is priced at an everyday, real price. That means you get all of the dazzle with none of the haggling. More boom for your buck. Now open at Clackamas Promenade. Harry Ritchie's, truly you.